To start up Visual Studio Express for the first time, go to the Start screen on Windows 8 or the Start menu on Windows 7 and look for the menu choice or tile for Visual Studio Express for desktop. You'll see that it's named VS Express. If this is the first time you've started up Visual Studio on your system, you'll be asked to register and provide a serial number. Follow the prompts and check your email for the serial number that will be emailed to you by Microsoft. Registration is free, but required. Once you've started it up, you'll be able to create your first project. To create a project, go to the menu and choose File, New Project. Visual Studio Express for Windows Desktop lets you create applications using three programming languages, Visual Basic, Visual C Sharp, and Visual C++. Within the Visual Basic section, choose the Windows category, and you'll find a number of options. You can build three different types of applications, a Windows Forms application, a WPF or Windows Presentation Foundation application, or a console application. Create a console application. After selecting that option, name the application Console First App. I'm placing the application and project in my Exercise Files 02 Getting Started folder, but you can place it anywhere you like. A console app starts off as a simple Visual Basic file called a module, and it has a subroutine or a method called main. This main method will be executed automatically as the application starts up. So place the cursor between the sub-declaration and the end sub-declaration, and any code you put there will be executed. Our first step is to execute a simple hello world, outputting a simple string. And I'll use an expression that looks like this console.write line. In Visual Studio, you can autocomplete code by pressing the tab key. So I started typing write, and then I moved the cursor to write line and pressed tab. Now I'll put in an opening parenthesis, and then a simple string of hello world. In Visual Basic, you don't need to finish the line with a semicolon or any other punctuation. All you need is the end of the statement, and in this case, that's the closing parenthesis. I'll save my changes with Control S, and then I'll run the application. When you're working with a console application, if you run with debugging, you'll see that the console window flies by very, very fast, but doesn't stay open. If all you're doing is outputting content into the console, run without debugging. And you can do that by going to the menu and choosing Debug, Start Without Debugging, or pressing Control F5. And there's the result. I see the string Hello World and a prompt, press any key to continue, and when I press any key, the console window closes. Now I'll add a few more lines of code. I'm going to declare a couple of simple variables. In Visual Basic, you declare a variable using the keyword dim. I'll talk about what that keyword does and what it means later, but for now, all you need to know is that every variable should start with dim. Then assign the variable name. I'll set it as value 1, and I'll give it a value of 5. If you already know C-style languages, such as C, C++, or Java, you might be wondering at this point whether you need to declare data types, that is, whether a variable is an integer, a double, a string, or some other type. And the answer is, in Visual Basic, you don't have to. You can follow a pattern known as typeless programming, where you let the Visual Studio compiler infer the data types. In this case, I'm saying that the value is 5, and the compiler will respond by saying that the value 1 is an integer. Next, I'll declare a second variable. I'll say dim value 2 equals 20. You might have noticed that I was prompted for a keyword called as, but I'm not going to use that right now. Finally, I'll declare a third variable named total, and I'll get its value by adding the first two variables together with this statement, dim total equals value 1 plus value 2. 
Just as I did earlier with autocompleting commands, you can also autocomplete variable names. For example, if I type in just VAL, I'll see a list of all available identifiers that have that string, and I can choose the one I want and press tab. Now, I'll output to the console again. I'll once again use console.writeLine, and I'll output a concatenated string. That's two strings put together. I'll start with the result is, and then I'll append to that by putting in a plus operator, and then I'll output total dot to string. That's how you convert a number to a string. I'll save my changes once again with control S, and I'll run with control F5. And there's the result, 25. So that's a look at how to build a very simple console application in Visual Studio using the Visual Basic programming language. We'll talk a lot more about this code and the concept of typeless programming later on in the course. And for most of this course, I won't be building console applications. I'll be building Windows Presentation Foundation or WPF-based desktop applications. But if you need to use a console application, this is how you get started.